Hello, welcome to another QA Automan tutorial. Last time we talked about implicit weights and how we set them up in our tests. You can see that video and I have placed a link down below. Today we're going to talk about explicit weights and how we set them up and how they're useful. Um, to set them up, it's actually a new object, uh, public web driver weight. And we're going to name this one weight. And you have to have your driver already created before you can create one a uh, web driver weight. I'm actually going to comment out our implicit weight. So weight equals new web driver weight. And now it's asking for uh, arguments. <clears throat> we need our driver, of course. Now the we're going to be focusing on timeout in seconds, and they sleep in milliseconds. The timeout in seconds is the amount of seconds you want to set your weight, um, the length of time for it to time out. So I'm going to set it to five seconds. And the next one is our, our sleep in milliseconds. Now this one is not as important because uh, it's default to 500 milliseconds. And this is the amount of milliseconds it sleeps between poles. So if you have a weight and you've set the condition, say, um, wait for element to be clickable, it will check if the element's clickable. If it fails or if it throws an error, it will sleep for 500 milliseconds and do the call again. And it'll keep doing that until, of course, you hit your five second mark and four times out and fails. This is set default to 500, so I'm actually not going to set anything for that third value. So now we have our weight, and this can be called throughout our test. Um, I am actually going to set up a weight on our base page so that all of our pages can have a weight um, called out for them. So public web driver weight like we did before. I'm going to call this one weight. And I'm going to set it up in our constructor. Weight equals new web driver weight. And of course it's driver and it's five seconds. So now every page, our Facebook main page, Facebook uh, main feed or login page, all can call this wait now. And that's the beauty of the base page. So let's go to our <clears throat> login test. And here I've actually created a new method in our page object class where I just call login, give it an email and password, and it does the three actions for me. Um, you can start doing this with a lot of different things like sign in, and it just kind of cleans your code up and your tests up so they're a little more uh, readable. So now you know that I'm you know, loading up a page. Actually, this can be called as a load. Assert equals that the title is there and that we're logging in. But if you remember, we created a a load page. Um, where did we create the load page? Um, here we have a load page. So we can actually go here and go to our main page. <coughs> Driver dot load page. There we go. And same here. And this will do all the work for us. So loading page, logging in, and then doing the rest of our error catching or error checking. So for our wait, uh, for the login, what I wanted to do is after the page loads, I want to wait to for the page to load before I start clicking in the text field. So here beforehand, I'm going to say wait dot until a condition. And we're going to be using expected conditions. Um, and this will already have some preset conditions for us. Um, in a later video, I'll actually show you how to create your own conditions. Because um, there's times where you'll be looking at these and you wish there was another condition that doesn't exist. And I'll show you how to uh, create those. For now, we're just going to wait for an element to be clickable. Um, 
and we're, we, we want web element element because we are using a page factory. The issue with page factory that you will run into is you don't have access to your by locator. Um, <clears throat> so this can limit you for some of the things, um, for some of these other conditions, and that's why creating your own conditions is very useful. So clickable web element, and we're going to pass in the element we want that is clickable. We want the email field. Um, once the email field is clickable, we can move forward with the rest of our test, knowing that the page is in fact loaded. <coughs> so we have our login. So let's run our test, our login test. So this is actually going to run a few times because of the data provider. Um, you won't really see much of a difference here. Um, but it won't start until the page is ah it's failing <laughs> um, my password is not one two three four five six um, it is failing um, but <clears throat> it it was waiting for the page to be fully um, it was waiting for the element to be clickable before it actually moved forward um, this is uh, use if I had a We can have a wait. We can have a wait after. Um, you can set these weights everywhere, um, and there's multiple multiple weights that are uh, really useful. Um, say we want. <coughs> let's copy this down. Dot. Um, if we were waiting for like alert to be present, um, you can hit this, and it will obviously wait for the alert to pop up before it will move forward. Um, there's a, a lot of different um, weights here for you to use. Um, I recommend, um, you know, if you ever run into a, a time where your tests are running way too fast, throw in a, a weight with the condition for something to be clickable or uh, for an element to appear before you move forward. Um, and this will <coughs> Um, bring down your test timing, your time for your tests to be completed um, down a lot, um, especially if you're using implicit weights, because implicit weights are for every find. Um, this one is explicitly where you've placed it in your test. Um, like I've said before, do not mix your implicit and your explicit weights. Use one or the other. Um, implicit weights are, are a good lazy way to do something, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, they're they're great. Uh, you can put it in and, and it will solve a lot of your issues. But sometimes, uh, you know, it will, it will miss something and explicit weight will be there to save the day. So that will um, complete my um, talk on explicit weights. Uh, later, like I said, I'll show you how to create your own conditions um, for explicit weights. Um, until then, QA Auto Man signing off.